Hey, welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. Today is a fabulous Wednesday and I hope that you're doing well. I have a funny story to share with you and the story is told in the first person point of view. So here it goes. In fourth grade, my son had a huge crush on a, a classmate. So for Valentine's Day, he bought her a box of chocolates and took it into school. When I returned from home from work, I found them on the couch eating the same box of candy. What happened? I asked. Well, the, the, kid said, the son said, well, I thought about it for a long time. He said between the chews, and I decided, for now, I still like candy more than girls. With the story, I want to have a famous movie quote, as Forrest Gump famously said, life is like a box of chocolates. And I have a funny quote that I want to share, and it foreshadows my future a little bit with our baby coming next year. So here's the quote. Quote, my favorite thing about watching a new movie with my five-year-old is probably watching it 17 times a day for the next three months. So with that, as a future dad, I'm going to say I can't wait to watch Frozen a million times and memorize every line. God's words for today comes from Job chapter 11, verse 1 through 20. Job chapter 11, verse 1 through 20. We will read from the NLT, so please carefully follow along and hear the word of the Lord. Then Zophar the Namathite replied to Job, Shouldn't someone answer this torrent of words? Is a person proved innocent just by a lot of talking? Should I remain silent while you babble on? When you mock God, shouldn't someone make you ashamed? You claim my beliefs are pure and I am clean in the sight of God. If only God would speak. If only He would tell you what He thinks. If only He would tell you the secrets of wisdom. For true wisdom is not a simple matter. Listen, God is doubtless punishing you far less than you deserve. Can you solve the mysteries of God? Can you discover everything about the Almighty? Such knowledge is higher than the heavens, and who are you? It is deeper than the underworld. What do you know? It is broader than the earth and wider than the snow. If God comes and puts a person in prison or calls the court to order, who can stop him? For he knows those who are false, and he takes note of all their sins. An empty-headed person won't become any wise any more than a wild donkey can bear a human child. If only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer. Get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Then, you face, then your face will brighten with innocence. You will be strong and free of fear. You will forget your misery. It will be like water flowing away. Your life will be brighter than noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as morning. Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid, and many will look to you for your help. But the wicked will be blinded. They will have no escape. Their only hope is death. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we have a conversation with Zophar, and we will find out that the book of Job is about Job and the conversations he has with his friends. We find that Zophar is unhappy with Job. He is unhappy with the things that Job is saying and that Job is saying this to God. But if you remember from yesterday, we find that there is a difference between complaining about God and complaining to God. When you complain about God, that is sin. But when you complain to God, that is a prayer. Zophar hears what Job has to say, and we can break it down to three different parts. First, Zophar criticizes Job for complaining. Zophar thinks that Job is prideful and thinks that he is righteous and upright. But here's the thing, on the matter of what has happened to Job, he knows that he has not done anything wrong. And Job, countless times before, talks about how he's not worthy and how sinful he himself is. So Job isn't saying that he's perfect, but he's saying that he didn't do anything wrong to deserve such kind of suffering. What does this mean? Job is saying that not all suffering cases are the result of God bringing about punishment. But rather, what we should do is, acknowledging that suffering is, um, is part of God's plan. That suffering is part of God's will. And at the end, we have to trust that God has a good end for all of us. And it is okay to question and ask God. And second, Zophar caused Job to repent. That, he, he, that if, he, if Job were to repent, then God would accept Job. Inferring that God would give Job blessings back if he were righteous. And lastly, Zophar rebukes Job, calling him out on what is happening. So overall, some of the things that Zophar says is not wrong. Zophar says that we are sinful inside of God, and that's true. And Zophar says God will forgive, and that is also true. But at the end of the day, the problem isn't the content of Zophar, but his application of theology to Job's situation is wrong. Many of us take certain truths about God and use it for our own purpose and intentions. Here, Zophar uses the truth of God to kind of chastise and to kind of get at Job and what he has done. Instead of providing grace, instead of providing comfort, instead of providing love for Job, Zophar takes the truth about God and really continues to hammer down on what Job did wrong. 
And so the usage of the witch in Zophar takes God's truth is wrong. And there are truths in our life that we might be misusing. So church, how are you taking the truth about God? And not only is it important that we know the truth about God, but how we use it. How we use it to treat ourselves. How we use it to talk about others or talk with our family or talk with those in need is crucial and important. So I pray that as God has given us such truths, that we may be good stewards of that truth and to use that truth to glorify God and God only. Let's pray. God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being with us. Heavenly Father, would you continue to show us truth? Let us know your truth and to be guided by your truth. But most importantly, would you help us to use this truth in the right way? So we thank you for loving us. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.